what happened on KTSE, meaning keep the same energy, the second studio album by Tayana Taylor. What could she have been possibly talking about in this piece of work? Hi, welcome to another edition of Cell Reviews. I am DJ T Cell and I am here to dissect and review Tayana Taylor's latest studio album, Keep the Same Energy. But before we begin the review, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for future content. Okay, so quick disclaimer. The reason why this review is very late in time is because I've been listening to a string of interviews that Tayana Taylor has performed and she has said that she is going to be releasing an updated album. And because of this, I put off recording or doing any review until when the album is released, when the updated one, because I've been believing that I'm not, I'm not listening to the full version. So in me waiting, nothing was released. So I gone ahead and do the review anyway in the short time that I have. I am sorry for this delay, but in the future, I'm just going to go with the first thing that I hear and update as I go along. That's my lesson here. Let's begin. I am now going to dissect the story of this album. The overall theme here in this entire body of work is mainly about a woman who is dealing with her insecurities whilst juggling and moving forward in a relationship with somebody who she considers to be the one. The track Three Ways demonstrates why she wants patience from him because she is showing him that she is willing to do everything to please him, that she's willing to do everything to bring him love and joy and she really has found someone that whom she feels that she can't let go of and clearly someone who has accepted her for all of her insecurities that could have been deeply rooted from exes or the way that she was brought up by being exposed to different situations and different scenarios such as having friends that have backstabbed her causing a lot more complex trust issues etc the track's Gonna Love Me, Issues and Rose from Harlem done a fantastic job in narrating this view. We all get that familiar feeling in Gonna Love Me. When you are with somebody and lying in bed with them who you deeply love, but due to overthinking and insecurities within oneself, one cannot begin to comprehend how to express this freely. Because of this complex and a multitude of irrational fears where many will struggle, and could lose their sanity as a result because they just don't know who to trust and why they should trust them. Then we have the two standout tracks, Issues and Hold On and Rose from Harlem, which all suggest that there is a lot of pain and regret. She completely believes he loves her with all her heart, but is very conflicted and borderline does not trust him presenting us with the idea that she also suffers from extreme cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when we hold on to two contradicting beliefs. In this case, she's holding on to the belief that he's a good man and he deserves to be trusted. At the same time, she's holding on to the belief of every man is the same and he's going to hurt me. These two beliefs conflict. Therefore, she has a lot of these irrational fears that are being harbored and nurtured day in, day out. Overall, I give this project a 6.5 out of 8. She done a wonderful job in narrating the view of a woman who is struggling to face up to her insecurities. She done a fantastic job in, in also shedding a light on what would happen when you do feed into your insecurities. And she done a wonderful job with the track Hurry as well, where she experienced a guy that gave ammunition to her insecurities and she was firing like crazy just because of the issues that was going on in her head and this guy was just presenting seeds of doubt. However, despite all of this, she didn't do enough to actually build that bridge with the listeners and her to bring us to a point of why this guy does deserve her love because we just experience issues and what she was fighting with, possible conflicts within herself, we don't have any indication to why everything just became suddenly okay in a track never would have made it. This was the last track of the entire album. There are no clues. Was it because of a possible marriage? Was it because of, of our friends convincing her? Ultimately, these questions would have been answered if she had more than eight tracks. 
I felt she would have brought in a lot more dimension to this project. But because of the fact that it was restricted to only eight tracks, you can't really do much. This restriction has really destroyed what was potentially a great album. She was very bare and very vulnerable in this entire album. And that is the makings of an, of an amazing album. But the potential was really stifled. I'm now going to dissect the lyrical content within this album. The most lyrical potent track in this album was Gonna Love Me, where it says, please wait for me till whenever I got home. This particular lyric, even though small, summed up the entire album because her simple request for patience was very understandable because she is working on delivering who she promised him to be when they got together. We have to remember that when two people first meet, they get a sudden surge, almost an explosion of various chemicals the in their brain, such as dopamine, oxytocin, and vasopressin, these are all drugs that our mind literally gives us. And it produces a high that we find ourselves in lust with somebody. And over time, when we start to rationalize it, it becomes love. And then we make a choice whether to get with them or not. During this phase that we go through, this dopamine phase, this oxytocin phase, we are presenting our best self to the other partner. We don't actually realize that we're giving them our best self. The time that the quote unquote insecurity starts to kick in is when it goes away, when we decide to take it to the next level and really, really sit back and get to know each other properly. So when we start to do this, that's when every insecurity quote unquote starts to come in. And this is one of the side effects that happens whenever we use drugs to escape a particular traumatic event and or mask insecurities when we're now going into a serious stage of love and getting together our brain presents us in a fight or flight mode we are always going to pick flight which is just run away we always choose flight and because our brain has developed coping mechanisms to deal with every single traumatic experience that befalls us and love is a trauma at times. This is why she was hiding her true self. This brought a lot of clarity, in fact, to the opening track, No Manners. In the chorus lyric, that sample that the person screams, where are you hiding? I'm actually productively digressing here, but that request for patience ending with till whenever I get home suggests that she does not know when she will return back to her usual and normal self. Because there's always that logical question that our brain poses to us saying, what if this happens again? And these are not insecurities. These are just simple questions that your brain asks you to basically get a response from you to see whether it should stay in safe mode or to go back to normal mode. Your brain is your tool. You control it. So this is the question that it designs for you to decide what you want to do next. And if you choose flight all the time, it's going to stay in safe mode. It's going to protect you. It was made to protect you, not kill you. So every time that you're presented with this question, if you don't have the proper guidance, in other words, if you don't have the mechanisms in order to present to your brain, this is how we're going to handle it. This is what we're going to do. If you don't have these uh, set of instructions, nine times out of ten, you're going to stay in safe mode until you do argue your brain out of, keep you in safe mode and trusting this particular person that you believe is going to change your entire life. This was amazing. The fact that she laid herself bare by opening up to uh, insecurities, dropping out double entendres, left, right, center, and complex metaphors, it really done wonders in the album. I guess the reason why I gave it a 5.7 is because of the fact that it was literally eight tracks. I think that really took away a lot from the album from what could have been a really good album, a brilliant album. And because of this reason, it becomes extremely hard to, to really understand what she was actually trying to say. I felt that there could have been a lot more dimensions offered. There could have been interludes where a friend is talking to her saying, you can do it, you can do it. This could have been the person that's trying to give her reasons to tell her brain to relax, that this guy is actually good for you, those people her support system, 
the people to reassure that the guy is good, even if you don't bring in the guy's perspective, but at least bring in the perspective that you have explored before letting your guard down. You understand? Because it just went from trouble straight into your guard is down. You love this guy now. But why? You understand? Those were not answered. And I felt that's why I can't give it any more than that. 5.7 is, is was the fairest for me. 6.5 for the story was the fairest for me. For the flow, I'm not going to take it that way. It flowed excellently. In fact, every track made sense. It's didn't, it didn't only flow sonically, as in the tracks blended in beautifully as it transitioned, but also story-wise, it really flowed. It really painted you a picture of the different moves that these guys are going in. The style was really expected. The use of samples of delivering those underlying messages and the undertones, it was executed beautifully. However, I really hated that laser effect in no issues and hold on. Gosh, that ruined it for me completely. This really knocked down the flow as well a bit because that really hit me off. But the transitions were really tight. It really sat well with it, with all of them. It guided us listeners through the process of arguing, having disagreements in gonna love me and no issues, uh, which, which was perhaps caused by her lack of manners in no manners performing an orgasmic foreplay, delving right into what was the best sex in Hori, showing her freaky side in three ways, ending with her shouting her undying love for him whilst explaining why she was a B-word with Rose from Harlem. This was impressive. I think it was done beautifully. The instrumentation, I'm going to be dissecting now. And to be honest, the first track pretty much set me up for a disappointment in the instrumentation side and the use of the piano it really confused me because i did not know whether it was in e flat minor b or b flat or b flat minor gosh how rushed was this track it was it pretty much set the tone for the album i was so confused i had to call my sister who is a music major to come and tell me what what key it was in she did not know she was like this, she said, this sounds as if you have children, 14 year old children who are about to sit their GCSE music project, all decide we're going to do this. This, this sounds good. So let's put that in here. Oh, I love those lasers. Let's throw that in there. This was the entire album summed up. Don't get me wrong. Rose from Harlem, really good beat. Gonna love me. Really emotive. WTP, different inventive however i didn't connect and the instrumentation is supposed to help you really really digest the message really properly like digest it like help you really feel the album i mean if the eight tracks wasn't bad enough because it didn't offer her much freedom to actually bring in perspectives that i know she would have not only did that hinder her a little bit but the instrumentation done the hindering as well. I have to really question whether it was her judgment on the instrumentals that was being picked out or whether that was Kanye's. Because when you listen to Pusha T, who is hip hop, when you listen to Nas, their beats were tight. Most of them were very carefully picked and it was structured very well. There was none, none of these lasers flying out of nowhere. And these guys are respected in their field. But with Tayana Taylor, I don't know whether Tayana gave him a lot of creative freedom. I don't know whether she said yes or no, just not do this. I don't like this cover beat. Because it's her album, I'm going to say she done an awful job in not putting her foot down and saying I like, maybe she does like those instrumentals. I don't know. But I felt if this is what she was actually going for in picking all those tracks, in picking all those instrumentals to use, to demonstrate her vocal ability, then she missed the mark completely and deserves the 2.8 because in each of those tracks, I would say WTP, no issues and hold on, our vocals were, were interrupted at least a number of times when she was trying to sing her ass out and trying to really get into the flow of it. In every interview that I watched, she has said this was rushed. I now saw in her tweet that they're not putting out an updated album that she said that they were going to do. So the vinyl verdict that I gave this was 
which was 5.7 added by 6.5 added by 4.5 added by 2.8 equals to 19.5 divided by 25 multiplied by 100 which equals 78 i think that's deserving that's all i have got so thank you so much for tuning in don't forget to subscribe hit that notifications for more videos that we've got lined up have a have a good day and see you next time